Hi, everybody. I'm Cole Delbick, and welcome back to Build Series. After a season of griffins, gargoyles, mysterious cults, teenage-owned speakeasies, and more shirtless boxing than UFC, Riverdale returns with a new season this week. Since last season's finale, everything has changed in the town of Pep. The opening hour serves as an incredibly moving tribute to actor Luke Perry, who suddenly passed away this March. The cast and crew band together on screen and in real life to mourn the TV icon in an episode that ranks as one of the series' finest. To talk about the premiere and the sure-to-be-twisty new season, we're joined today by the parents of Riverdale, Skeet Ulrich, Mark Consuelos, Marisol Nichols, and Molly Ringwald. Before we bring them out, let's take a look at the trailer. Let's give it up for Molly, Mark, Marisol, and Skeet, everybody. That is a trailer if I've ever seen one. Yes, it is. Thank you all for being here and congrats on season four. My favorite show, Riverdale, stays winning. I'm so excited. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I know you were all at New York City Comic Con this weekend and this year was no kids, just parents. And the parent storylines are seriously some of my favorite because they're just as messy as the kids. Um, so what was that like to commune with fans and sort of preview the new season? Uh, well, it's good to be home. You know, I'm, I'm from New York, so to, to be home and, and see all the fans and uh, to be on that. But it was it was nice, right? Yeah, it's always it's really heartwarming to be honest. I you know it's flattering and uh, it just feels so good. To, I mean, we're tucked away in Vancouver, working, 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 yeah. working, working. So it's you know we're on the eighth episode now. It's just a nice reminder that. People, People are still watching. Like our show. Yeah. <laughs> that they do. I mean, did you have any fun fan interactions? I imagine those fans were sort of wild and rabid to see you all. There was one girl yesterday, if you guys remember, that was crying oh, yeah. down the line. The, or, yeah. And just tears pouring down her face as she met like each one of us. Yeah. Yeah, we, we actually hired her for Riverdale. <laughs> we like to make people hire chat. That was actually me in drag. I was just <laughs> You know, I, I know this is also an incredibly bittersweet moment um, with the absence of Luke, and the opening episode is such a beautifully written and well-acted hour of TV, and I think it's, yeah, as I said, one of the finest I've seen um, of the whole series. Um, and as a fan, it feels a really sort of like moving send-off to the character, but I know for you all, the lines between sort of reality and the world of Riverdale are a bit more blurred, especially given these circumstances. So what did that sort of opening episode mean for all of you to film? It was really difficult. I mean, I think it was it was hard for all of us. Um, we all, I mean, I, I felt like I had a really special relationship with Luke. Almost all of my scenes were, were with Luke or with uh, KJ. Um, so for me, it was like getting to say goodbye to him. I didn't get to go to his memorial in Los Angeles. So it was, it was, it was all real for me. But what I really realized was how everybody felt like they had that relationship with Luke. You know, he was that kind of person where he was just so beloved by everyone. So I think it was really emotional for, for all of us. Yeah, just the table read alone um, was surreal. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was, it was so beautifully written and um, such a nice send off. I think everybody cried during the table read. I mean, yeah, so, everybody. everybody. It was like we're reliving it. Yeah, because we had some distance from it, right? Because yeah. in April we... Yeah, it was about away. four months, I think. Four, yeah. yeah. So as soon as yeah. we yeah. step yeah. back, yeah. right, the right same back. environment, kind same of. trailers, same everything. And it's weird walking around there and not, yeah. not seeing it. And, you, you know, I mean, we, we all have, you know, the people you see on screen have a very specific and yeah. beautiful, or had a specific and beautiful relationship with Luke. And, <clears throat> but everybody you don't see also had the same Including healing. the crew. Yeah, yeah. The cr yeah, yeah that's everybody. what everybody, he affected everybody. And yeah. it was just a very magnanimous, giving, loving, care he yeah. listened. He just yeah. listened to people. And, and I think... Roberta was really smart, the creator of the show, uh, because he he died uh, at the end of last season, uh, and we had to do how many? Two. Three? Two. two? Two episodes without him. And it felt really strange um, to not feel like we were addressing it, but he really wanted to take his time with it and do something that was a real tribute um, to him and, and honored his memory, um, both the character and, of course, Luke. And I, I think he really achieved that with the episode. Yeah, no, he surely did. And, and, you know, watching you all on screen and then interviewing some of you all throughout the years and then seeing you all on social media, you all feel like a really tight-knit group, uh, a really tight-knit cast. And I imagine something like this sort of bonds you even closer. It, it was that sort of what happened on set? I mean, we all feel like we're 
kind of family. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're up, there, I mean, we're up there together, long days, long hours, you know. So a tragedy like that, yeah. I mean. I mean, it rippled yeah. through, you know, everybody's phone that morning. Um, and uh, we all convened at Mark's house and or his apartment there in yeah. Vancouver. And I, it's indescribable, to be honest. Yeah, the love that we all have, you know, we also had for Luke. Luke. So it's, you know, it's, it was tragic well, he we was all very much him. like fred andrews sorry but yeah. he was very much that guy always a kind word always willing to help always friendly like i don't think there's anyone that we've ever run into that were like oh yeah i don't like luke everybody loves luke everyone yep and you know i don't want to spoil it too much but shan doherty has a uh, sort of appearance in this episode and it's so so well done um and really sort of adds a different layer to the the opening hour um what was your reaction when you heard that she wanted to sort of come aboard I, I mean, I remember talking to him about her before, just, just you know, about some other things, and he was so fond of her, so I'm sure he would have loved, loved that. And, and Molly, this sort of marks a, a different stage for you with this show. You know, you now stand as Archie's major support system, um, and your work in, in the premiere is so beautiful. Um, Thank you. What was that like to sort of step into the world of Riverdale in a new way and now commit, because you're going to be sort of recurring throughout the season, correct? Yes. Uh, it it was, you know, obviously bittersweet because, um, I mean, I'm so happy to be a part of the show. But, you know, the circumstances, obviously, um, I, w I wish that it, it was different. Um, I just miss him. But I'm very happy to be a part of the show and also to get to know Mary a little bit more and get to know the relationship between Mary and and uh, Archie, which is a little complicated because even though Mary's, uh, you know, the good mother, um, she hey. has been gone, you know, <laughs> I mean, she left when her uh, when her son was 15. And I think that that that's a little complicated and complex, like, like everything else in Riverdale. I think it's a little, it's not, everything is not exactly how it appears. I can't wait to find out your dark secret. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not that brutal. I feel like there's going to come out. Something. There's something Who you're sleeping <laughs> with. Like Sarah on the Florence. Side. It's a, you know, something's, it's something went on <laughs> at Sarah Florence, I'm sure. The Sarah Florence thing killed me. I, I thought, <laughs> she has all these friends too, like lawyers and, you know. Right? Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah. Um, you know, the new season sort of picks up in earnest in uh, the second episode and sort of the new mysteries shift into focus. And I want to start with the lodges because the last time we saw you, you were free, <laughs> <laughs> free on your way to prison. And now you are both locked up. But something tells me that that won't keep you from sort of pulling the puppet strings in Riverdale. So tell me about uh, Hiram and Hermione's journeys this season. Um, Go ahead, number well, yeah. One. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, it's Hiram's prison. So <laughs> Big I remember when they when that storyline came out when he was building his own private you know for profit prison I knew I already you know I was like he's going to be the first inmate <laughs> of this prison you know and he was um, but I think even you know it's kind of like a white collar situation for him he it's gets kind of, room service yeah there. it's like I think it's more like a country club situation right. for for Hiram. But well, like the Republicans, huh? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Hot take. Didn't yes. mean to go there. Right. Yeah, <laughs> let's go there. No, <laughs> um, I don't think Hermione quite has it as good as Hiram, considering she's in there for attempting to kill him. Um, I think she she really doesn't like it, and it's and it's not lost on her that he's sort of running the show. I imagine lots of nights where all of a sudden the heater didn't turn on, and mm. there's not an extra, there's not a pillow, and things like little little things like that. Normal husband and wife. That's right. Yeah, you know, exactly. Typical. Um, and so we've sort he of... He tried to kill me first. <laughs> Good Just point. Just saying. Good point. Yeah. We've seen, yeah, more sort of like adversaries. There's a business relationship. But I know we're going to sort of get into the more romantic part yeah. of the relationship we see a little bit in the trailer. Uh, what is that like to Yeah, explore? it was interesting because I think the first, uh, the, the, the second and third season that I joined, it was a very kind of transactional relationship. Very yeah, business. It was, it was very business, very cold. Um, really cold and eerie, um, and I'm glad they they're exploring like the the hot side of it, you know, the hotter side of it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I mean, to get his to shirt off. <laughs> Anything. Could you do it now? <laughs> you just, uh, My shirt's off. <laughs> Not hard on this show. Yeah. Um, there just had to, there has to be something underneath their sure business yeah. transaction mafia kind of life, and so and that scene really describes it, don't you it think? It does. Like uh, the it, slap. It's absurd. The it's crazy. Uh, the stuff that comes out of their mouth, but it's actually, you get it. Like, oh. oh On the I, dining room table. Yeah, I understand. 
I know. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait. And I, here we have another lodge coming out of the woodwork. A, a yeah. daughter. Uh, a daughter, that, yes. yeah. A daughter from, from a preview. previous yeah. relationship. And she's, I guess she Yay. plays. She plays older. <laughs> I love this. She plays older than, than Veronica. Yeah. yeah, yeah don't yeah. you think? Um, but she's really um, the antithesis of Veronica, their relationship. She's really loyal, super loyal to Hiram. Um, and Yay. Has his back in a major way. Yeah. Ooh, wow, I mean, that's such an interesting <laughs> And she's a great actress, Michelle she's Prada. Very, oh, God, I love great. her. She's so great. So, so think of the Lodge family as a three. Um, yep. So to add another point to that triangle is going to be exciting. Yep. So the Lodge family is sort of splintered, but Skeet, the Cooper, Jughead family, we're all in one house, um, <laughs> under one roof. Yeah, I miss my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was thinking about your character, and he sort of had the biggest arc in some ways, the most change um, that we've seen, because we met him and he was sort of this alcoholic gang leader, not a really great father, and now he's the sheriff, he's a family man, he has two kids at home, um, another long lost kid entering the picture. So tell me about that sort of um, where we met him and where we are now. Well, I mean, I think at, at his heart, he's always, uh, will always be a serpent. Um, I, you know, he's always been from the wrong side of the tracks and will probably always feel that way. So the facade of, of this happy family life and a nine to five job and all that is probably starting to wear a little thin. Um, but yeah, from the start, I you know he's he certainly didn't really even want Jughead in the house. Was sort of ushering him on, ushering him on, and uh, the the power of addiction was real for him. Um, he lost everything for alcohol, uh, so it's been really interesting to see you know this ne'er do well really you know find his way and to be absolved of you know Jason Blossom's murder finally, and then to m keep moving forward. It's you know, you never know what you're going to get with out of Roberto's mind. I mean, it, which is always fascinating and always compelling. And uh, so I don't, I don't know where it's going next, but I suspect, you know, at some point I will be the serpent king again. Yeah, inside the cop, uh, the police jacket that I wear, I had talked to the wardrobe department about him. He's not a cop, you know. He's always going to be a serpent, and then. I had been wearing it for about a week, and I looked inside one day, and there's a serpent patch sewn into the inner, you know, the inside liner, and I haven't figured out a way to show that yet, but we'll find a good point to to reveal it. Oh, I love that. That's so emblematic of his journey. Yeah, um, yeah, it really is. And so, yeah, so we're all under the same roof now. Does that mean that Alice and FP are are sort of Phallus what we're is happening? Phallus is rising. Real. It's <laughs> very on, real. On. Yeah, it's really on. The cool thing about it is uh, you start to see as this season moves forward, at least where we are now, the much like you guys, the the why. Why are they? Why is there so much heat with them? And and you see her step up and have his back, and the the simple conversations of you know how she's just there for him and he's always been there for her but uh, you know we haven't really seen this side we've known they had a chemistry but didn't really understand why necessarily and so we're starting to peel that away a bit which is really interesting you know there's so many ships that fans love in the show but they've particularly latched on to fp and alice what do you think it is about that dynamic that sort of gets the internet buzzing i i really don't know to be honest i mean i you know there's a lot of younger ships in the show and so you know and our 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 audience is not all young so maybe it's some maybe it's that but i don't know what it is i mean machin and i you know but we we all have sort of the same fun you know loving relationships with each other and same with machin and i and machin and all of us and so i don't know what it is in particular maybe it's just that they're two you know people you you kind of want to root for for some reason and I also hear in the family affair that you ha your father is sort of incoming inbound to Riverdale, maybe a mid-season arrival. There is a little, yeah. He, Jughead's been sort of peeling away at who this guy is, and, uh, and FP wants nothing to do with him. Um, and so that causes some tension between them, and eventually we find out who he is. Yeah. Does Ooh. he come to Riverdale? He does not come exactly to Riverdale. <laughs> He comes, he's, he's somewhere in the outskirts. Got it. Yeah. 
They can't wait. You know, uh, Mark, I was also thinking of you. So it, the show's been sort of a family affair as well because your wife and your son have both been on it. Um, that flashback episode last, or two, last Wasn't season was... Wasn't it fun? They did such a good job. Oh, it was yeah. uncanny. Yeah. Um, what was that like to have them around? And could we see them maybe pop up again? Oh, gosh, I hope so. I was just, you know, Kelly was just saying she hasn't been up to Vancouver in a while. So that was so much fun. But it was a bit, you know, we've worked together before. So it, 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 that was really exciting to have her. But to have my son up there... Um, that was surreal and it was just so cool. And he, you know, he was the car would pick him up at nine 30. He, he was downstairs like nine ten, waiting for them. And he was so worried about being late and he was, you know, he did, a, he, he was so earnest about the whole thing. It was really special. I love that the parents sort of have their own mythology that, you know, they've known each other for so long as it's well. Cool, yeah. Midnight club and all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And that so informs the present. Um, you know, I also learned from Comic-Con that Madchen is directing an episode later in the season. I know, Molly, last time we talked that you were sort of had announced that you were directing a new project. Still working on it. Still working yeah. on it. Um, any chance that any of you might want to direct an episode one day? <sighs> Maybe. Maybe eventually. <laughs> what is that Maybe. grumble a no? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I really do. It seems like a lot of work. Uh, right, I mean, yeah. God, it seems yeah. like a lot of work. I know Machen is, and and also Natalie as well. She's uh, she's gone through. The, I think um, the, the Maybe Warner Brothers. Brothers. Yeah, Directors yeah, program. yeah. Exciting to sort of see the different tools in the toolkit. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, I, I'm I'm content to to just act in this. I do. I've directed one thing, and I I love doing it. But um, but no, I'm content to to just play in this one. You know, Riverdale is also famous for these amazing musical episodes. Yeah. Um, the Heather's one was such a standout. Um, but my one complaint is that we don't hear enough of the parents singing. Um, I was you do not to want to do. Hear me. No. <laughs> um, I do. I do. I was supposed to do a duet with Cammy. I think it was the last episode of the episode before and at the last minute there was a, a thing with the song rights so we didn't do it but that that would have been fun uh, and Roberto is talking it. about um, an upcoming musical episode so I hope that Mary can you gets sing? a chance to, to uh, sing I can lip sync and you can make it sound <laughs> like will they I lip sync us if we can't sing <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah oh my gosh yes. are they AJ can't band? sing huh? no I'm kidding <laughs> I can't sing <laughs> yeah who are the singers of the group um Cammy for Molly sure. Can sing. Yeah. I can sing Cammy, um, Casey. Madeline, Casey. Casey can yeah. sing. What about Lily? Can Lily, Lily can sing. Cole yeah. can sing, we found out. Cole, okay. Yeah. Yeah, finally, he sang this right? episode, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, Pop Tate, big singer. <laughs> Can't wait. He probably is. Smithers. I bet he is. Smithers rocks out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's sort of been so exciting to see each of the sort of young actors break out and sort of explore dip their toes into other projects. And you mentioned Lily, and she was such a powerhouse in Hustlers, um, which is now this huge hit. And I was, I'm so obsessed with that movie and her performance is incredible. Um, have you guys seen it? And what has it been like to sort of see these, your TV kids branch out into different projects? I haven't seen it yet, but I'm really looking forward to it. I have three kids, so that's my excuse. I haven't, but have yeah, you seen no, it? Yeah, I haven't seen but they're all stars. They're movie stars. I mean, they're, they're the sky's the limit with them. All of them, yeah. yeah. Okay, we're gonna I was actually filming a movie when Hustlers came out, but and now I have no excuse after that. I've just been traveling. <laughs> we need to organize like a group hang and all go to we see do. Hustlers. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. It's a little crazy. Um, and you know, this also feels like a real sort of milestone year for the show. Um, it's the senior year for the kids in the cast. Um, and I'm sort of wondering about the future of Riverdale. If we haven't heard of like a Riverdale U or um, possibly like <laughs> college. University of Riverdale. Yeah, I don't know. Right. I mean, this town has everything, right? Um, what do you think about sort of the show's future? Do you see it going the college route? Do you see it jumping five years ahead? Like, what could I, it be? I, I, I've tried to predict things on the show, and I've, it's... it's you can't. You can't. Yeah, I mean, you it's can't. called Riverdale, yeah. so it kind of somewhat you, needs to stay in the yeah, town, but you, can't. you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, and sort of speaking of the fans, sort of uh, the incredible fandom, I was wondering, you know, what were those shows for you growing up? Or would it be a band or a sports team or something that you sort of obsessively followed, like perhaps some of the fans here um, sort of love the show? Twin Peaks for me. I love Twin Peaks. Yeah, more recently, Breaking Bad. Like, yeah. that one. Yeah. Succession, oh, yeah. but I know this is not one we're Yeah, but when we're kids. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. Okay, okay uh, fine, kids, fine. Yeah. I mean, Friends, <laughs> I think, was the biggest biggest thing around i watched every episode it was amazing yep. pearl jam probably had me in yeah. my youth yeah, yeah i was yep. really obsessed by them and still am to some degree i i was kind of in 
the movies that everybody <laughs> was watching. You weren't I didn't kinda. have any you movies that had teenagers that I was not in. So, um, you were. yeah. You yeah. really were. <laughs> um, you were. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but but I had movies that I really liked to watch. Um, I mean, the, all the movies, I think, of the 70s, the, you know, the Dog Day Afternoon and... Mm -hmm. Um, you know, The Godfather and all of those movies. I was, and uh, and I liked French movies, okay? I'm just going to say it. I know it sounds pretentious, <laughs> but okay, I really okay. liked, uh, you know, the French, the Truffauts and the Godard films, and yeah. Some of my favorite things about watching Riverdale now is that as much as I love the characters and, and sort of root for them, the stories have become so insane at certain points that I, it just makes me laugh so much. Oh, yeah. um, like Jingle Jangle or the boxing <laughs> or, you know, and I was like, Veronica is a speakeasy owner. I'm like, yep. what is going, when are these kids, you know? Um, what are some of your favorite maybe outlandish storylines, be it with your own characters or some of the others that we've seen over the past three seasons? Um. Gosh, that's called Tuesday and Thursday for us. Yeah, so working, yeah, everything right. is just I outlandish. Think, I think I think the fact that it's a comic book, it, you, yeah. he has that license to go out there and really do whatever he wants to do. I think for me or Hermione, the the character of Small Fry that was the son of Papa Poutine, that was that was kind of it for me. That I made like, you laugh. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. it, it and he was hilarious. huge, right? And he, he was, was huge. huge. He was one of the biggest guys. <laughs> I don't know where they found that actor. He was like six six. He was Canada. huge. <laughs> Canada. Yeah. Canada. They're very healthy. They're very <laughs> stout. <laughs> they are. It's good air over there. Yeah. I, the yeah. whole gargoyle king thing. Like I. I mean, I, it it just had me. I my head was spinning as we you know as I would read each script. I had no idea what was up or what was down sometimes and. And uh, in the best way, it just yeah. twisted all over the place. And there were so many different people you thought it was. And then, so, I mean, I even wore the, the costume at one point, which is ridiculously hard to do, <laughs> by the way. The, uh, uh, the headpiece, you feel like you're just going to fall forward at some, pe at some point. But that one really, I I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. Couldn't keep yeah, it. Yeah, I had to watch well. that last episode again to be like, okay, Penelope Blossom. This is okay. This is how it's yeah. happening. Um, we have some audience Q and A's, and we have actually a tweet first. Okay. Um, Angelica Mick wants to know what has been your favorite moment on set so far. Hmm. For me, it was the first musical episode, and watching because I knew Cammy had done you know, musical theater in college and stuff, and I knew, but seeing them all for the first time, I mean, and we kind of threw it together. Like, you would think it's a musical episode. You would think there'd be all this rehearsal and, like, that routines Carrie? and dances. Yeah. yeah, and it wasn't. It was, like, we had the same amount of time to shoot that as everything Let's else. put on a play. And yeah. watch them all <laughs> I've got a barn. together. I've got a barn. And I thought they killed it. I loved that. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah, I liked, there was a similar story, um, the, the Heathers, play um they were all on stage at the same time yeah. and th we were waiting between shots and i was just looking at them i go i wonder if they're ever gonna remember that moment at this time in their careers all together because they're all going to be going off yeah. at some point yeah. it was just a beautiful I, that was my favorite part my favorite uh, moment actually was not on screen but it was off screen and it was with Luke and I know it must it must be on a blooper reel somewhere because I know that the camera was rolling but he kept doing the voice from uh, Sling Blade you know the <laughs> Billy Bob yeah, yeah. did he ever do that for you? Oh, oh yeah it was amazing yeah. and I was in the original some folks called a Sling Blade that the short that that movie was based on and I it was eerie how good he was at doing <laughs> Billy, Billy Bob, Bob Thornton's yeah. voice in that Potatoes. yeah yeah. I see those bloopers. <laughs> uh, I think mine so far was a little more more personal, like in the sense that uh, my son ha, ha, thinks he wants to be a, a cinematographer, so I brought him up. He's been shadowing our DPs for uh, the beginning part of this season, and um, we were doing a shot for the beginning of an episode, a long crane shot down on, down Sketch Alley, and. Uh, and unbeknownst to me, they had pulled him aside and dressed him up as F.B. Jones. And he had a sheriff's uniform on, his hair slicked back. And we rolled the first take on that shot. And all of a sudden, a, tw you know, a young me comes running straight at me because he looks just like me, shooting a Nerf gun at me in the middle of the take. And Aww. everybody had set it all up. And it was, <laughs> it was really sweet. It was a lot of fun. And we laughed for 30 minutes before we could <laughs> shoot again. That is so sweet. It really feels like a family. I love that. Um, we have questions from the audience now. Hi. 
Hi, my name is Elizabeth, and I just want to say I love you all so much. And my question is for Ski. Um, can you tell us what Alice and FP's relationship is going to be like with Charles? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, at the you know certainly in the in the beginning of this season, um, there's a you know Alice comes back from the farm, and uh, there's a real question as to who Charles is actually, and. Uh, Ultimately, we, we start to work together a little bit and um, trying to piece some things together that are going on in the in this season. And uh, we haven't really addressed the the whole father son thing yet so much as deal with current issues in Riverdale. Um, but I'll be curious to see when that when that finally happens, what those conversations are. Something feels a bit too convenient with him being an FBI. Doesn't it? I'm like, yeah. mm, there's something more here. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. Hi, I'm Ro. I love you all, too. And this is for all of you. If you guys were teenagers now, which character on Riverdale would you most identify with or be besties with? What you think? What you got, Molly? <laughs> uh, I probably, I mean, probably Betty, I guess. I I don't know. I, I don't feel like I'm exactly like any of them, but I would say, I guess, a cross between Betty and and um, and uh, Cheryl, just because of the red hair. But <laughs> that track, that track. I mean, she looks like she could be my daughter. I yeah. think Madeline looks more like my daughter than my own kids. Totally. Do. I think <laughs> I think Reggie for me, he seems like he'd be fun to hang out with and um, get in trouble with. <laughs> um, probably Veronica for me. Just growing up in the city, I grew up in Chicago, and so she's kind of very city city wise so probably her yeah i'd i'd probably wind up friends with uh with archie just because i never got to hang out with the football players and all that in school <laughs> i was not cool enough to be on that side of the high school yeah. so i would want to be with him it's your second chance so. yeah exactly <laughs> we have another Thank question you. Hi, my name is Deanna. Um, I also love all of you guys. Um, Thanks. So I was wondering, do you guys ship Barchi, and do you think that they're going to happen this season? Barchi is such a loaded Archie. question. <laughs> we get that on social media all the time. Yeah, I don't know. Again, like, I mean, it's it's hard for us to know what we just got the script for episode nine, which is really good, really interesting. And who knows what happens in 10, let alone 11 through 22. So I, I have no way of knowing. Anything can happen. Yeah. I ship it. Do you? <laughs> yes, you heard it here first. I love it. So I'm a Bughead fan. But then I'll isolate, like, Barchi people completely. See that? Yeah. I always have to break it down in my head. Okay, the B means <laughs> yeah. in the... Which is <laughs> because, you know, Lillian Cole. Yeah. Yeah. I I feel like, though, in the sort of span of the series, given the comic book history, there's going to be some shuffling. Oh, depending on how many seasons yeah. we have, it's going to go back and forth. Don't worry. It's like Barch is like right? season seven, season yeah. eight. You know, we'll <laughs> right, yeah. um, one more question we have before we have to let you go. Hi, my name's Monica. Also Monica. a huge fan of the show. Um, as you guys are kind of filming and working out scenes, how much input do you have in how a scene would play or how your character is going to work? Um, if any, and if so, who is the most likely to give their opinion on how things would shake out? Ooh, interesting I think, question. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we, you know, there's a certain, first of all, the time it takes to shoot, there's not a whole lot of time for conjecture. Um, so if you have ideas, you have to come in, or issues, you have to come in with solutions. And everybody has to be sort of in agreement about that. It, you know, by the time we're, it's time for us to shoot, we can't affect much more than yeah. dialogue, to yeah, be honest, no because we know where it's set, the cameras are already there waiting, we can't say, well, I would never have that conversation here. You know, I would have it over, on, you know, at Pops, not here or whatever. So there's not a lot that we can necessarily change other than, you know, I mean, it is our interpretation in terms of how the characters move, how they access the space they're in, all that is, is up to us. And, and yet, even sometimes, we don't have time to necessarily move through the space because that would require three more shots yeah. that we don't have time yeah. to get. And, and so it's, it's such a specific universe, and I feel like... You know, it's. I think it's kind of fun to see where they go with everything. But the one thing I did say to Roberto was after Luke died, I said, please, please don't have Mary sign off um, 
Archie to, to someone else. Like, please don't do, just as a mom, like, and he said, oh my God, I would never do that. So, I, you know, that was the, like, the one thing I said to, to Roberto, and he definitely listened. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a moving train, so uh, what Skeet said, you, you can't really take too much time and, you know, uh, coming up with an idea of what you want to do, and this would be different, but we have, we, Skeet and I added something um, that's going to be really fun to a scene that we did, yeah. um, that you'll see, um, and, but we, gave, we, you know, reached out the night before, we thought this would be great if we could add this, and he was like, yeah, go do it. You know, and it did add some time. To, Abs- yeah, it really it did, did add yeah. a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> what that was little it? Are you thing. allowed to say? We can't. Uh, no, no, it's no, really, it's, it's, it's like a plot point. We make, we make out. <laughs> also, <laughs> also, we don't know anything ahead of time yeah. at all. So we don't know what's happening with our character, where it's going. So we'll get the script. We'll find out, oh, what do I do? What do we do? And you just kind of have to trust that maybe two scripts later, it's going to all come <laughs> around or make sense or this or that. So it's sort of like... As Mark said, you're on a train. And you're just it's kind moving. of long for the ride. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mean to get the sense that it's not. I mean, Roberto is incredibly receptive to ideas collaboration, and yeah. to collaboration. Yeah. It's it, but once you get there in the moment, you know, you got to be too late there by that. Can't yeah. hold up yeah. production. Yeah. 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 Well, the show, yeah, as you said, has such a specific tone, you know, and then I, he knows what he's doing. It's such a perfectly yeah. excellent totally. vision. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Um, everybody, make sure to watch this new season on Wednesday. It's such an incredible opener. Um, and let's please give it up for Molly, Thank Mark, Marisol, and Ski. Yes. Thank you Thank all. You. Thanks, Thanks for being here. here.